Howdy. This, pro this presentation is on heap exploitation. It is adapted from a presentation by Colin Garmathy and Drew Gratifiori given in the spring of 2018. In this presentation, we'll be going over the basics of the heap and the structure of the heap. And in future presentations, we'll be talking about actual heap exploitations that you can do once you understand the foundations. So let's start by defining the heap. The heap is a global data structure that provides dynamically allocated memory storage that allows an application to allocate space for variables at runtime that can exist outside the scope of the currently executing function. In other words, heap is global memory that is not created until it is first used in the program, and it will stay in use until it is free. In address space, similarly to how the stack grows down, the heap grows up. Heap takes advantage of two main functions, malloc and free, which we'll, we will discuss in greater detail later on in the presentation. There are two different parts of the heap, chunks and bins. Chunks are pieces of the heap that, when allocated, contain data and information relating to that data. After chunks are freed, information about the surrounding chunks is added to the existing structure. Bins are lists that hold freed chunks for reuse by malloc, realloc, and other allocation algorithms. Various types of bins exist for different chunk sizes, such as small bins and large bins, but of special interest are fast bins, which we will discuss in greater detail later. These bins allow for increased efficiency and allocating memory. The way memory is allocated is that we give it a certain payload size. And this uh, to this size, we add four bytes and round to the nearest eight. So for example, if we were to allocate 56 bytes of data, we would add four for surrounding information and then round up to 64 because 56 plus four is 60 and the next multiple of eight is 64. So as you can see, while the chunk is in use, we have our size, which is the size of the payload. Then these three flags right here that we use to get a little more information about the chunk we're currently looking at. A special interest is this previous in use uh, flag that describes if the previous chunk is in use or is allocated. As you can see in the next chunk in this example, P is equal to one because our chunk is currently allocated. After we call free, it changes structure. So we still have the previous size of the chunk that comes before it and our current size, and these three flags are still set. However, we then put a pointer to the next chunk in the bin that this freed chunk is assigned to and a backwards pointer to the previous chunk in that bin. Uh, again, as we discussed a second ago, there are different types of bins depending on what size this chunk is and it will point to other chunks that are, have been freed that are in that bin. Then we have what's remaining of our payload, but what's important here is that our payload is not overwritten when it is freed. So whatever, so the only parts that are overwritten are these four right here. And then in the payload, everything is just left over. Then if you go to our next chunk, you can see that the previous end use pointer is now set to zero because this chunk has been freed. So it will allow, when we're going through our chunks, it will allow th uh, this chunk to jump to this one up here based on what the previous size is. So now we're gonna do an example in order to come to a greater understanding of how malloc and free work. What we're gonna do is we're gonna allocate three chunks, all of size 100, and then take the second chunk and fill it with A's. Then we're gonna free the chunks in the order of the second chunk, the third chunk, and then the first chunk in order to see how the overhead bits work uh, when they are freed. So we're going to start by allocating our first chunk of size 100. However, as you can see in the overhead, it's equal to 69, which is uh, in decimal 105. Why 105 when we only allocated 100? Well, as you remember, it has to be in the payload has to be in multiples of eight. So we have our 100, which goes up to 104 because that's the multiple of eight. Then why is it 105? Well, as you can see, the last bit is our previous in use bit, which is set to one making it 105. Because it's the flag, it's separate from our 104 that we uh, allocated for our payload. Since it's the first chunk, we always set our previous in use bit to one so that no memory is allocated before it. So then when we return our chunk pointer, which is chunk one in our example, chunk one points to the beginning of our payload, not to the beginning of our chunk. Uh, this, is, this is so it can more easily access the memory whenever we are trying to use that. Uh, now would also be a good opportunity to address the top chunk. So if you remember from our definition, the heap is created at runtime when it is first used. It doesn't just create memory for the area that we malloc. Rather, it creates, creates a large block 
that we will continue to take memory space out of. Extra memory that is not in use is called the top chunk. The top chunk is start, it starts off as the entire heap, and then when we, when we make our first malloc, it moves up to be after the last chunk that has been allocated. When chunks are freed, the top chunk will coalesce with them if they are adjacent to the top chunk and if they are not placed in the fast bin. If they are not adjacent, then they will just be placed in a bin. And in the case of fast bins, it is more efficient to just place it in the fast bin than to have it coalesce again with the top chunk. So now we're going to allocate a second chunk of size 100 as well. As you can see, the size of the top chunk goes down because we are allocating from it. But the size is still 69 or 105 because it's still 100, still adding 4 to make the payload 104, and still have the previous in-use bit set to 1, creating it, making it 105. So now I'm going to allocate a third chunk. As you can see, it looks the exact same as the one before it, and our top chunk has moved down again. Then we're going to put A's in our middle chunk. Now I'd like to point out these last few bits right here, where we still have A's uh, ending our payload. After our second chunk is deallocated, these bytes will become part of the third chunk, and this is where our previous size will be. However, while our middle chunk is still allocated, these bytes belong to the second chunk. So now we freed our second chunk. The first thing we notice here is that this 69 is now a 68. Why? Because the last bit that makes it a 69 is the previous in-use bit. And as we can see, the previous chunk is no longer in use, making it 68. Right here, we have the previous size. The previous size was 104, which is 68 in hexadecimal. And so it knows, all right, to traverse to the bytes. next chunk, we need to go back 68 bytes to uh, right here. And then it will see, oh, the previous chunk is still in use, and then it'll go back to the next chunk. Uh, the next thing we notice are these two pointers. Uh, because it's the only chunk in a bin currently, they both just point back to the bin header. And then still here, as we can see, the previous is still in use, and so it's 69, and then this, uh, these bytes are still technically part of our first because it is still in use. Also, know how when we free chunk 2, nothing in it is overridden. So for security purposes, whenever we free a chunk, we should always make sure to clear out our our data. But for the mo but this is often not done by programmers and is an opportunity for exploitation. The next command we will issue is to free chunk 3. Now, as you can see, instead of setting the previous bit uh, to zero and having this be a 68, actually the top chunk group, uh, moves back to here because the two chunks that we have freed coalesce with what was and what is the top chunk. And then all we have left at this point is our first chunk. Finally, we're going to free chunk one. And as you can see, the top chunk again coalesces with this final chunk, leaving us with an empty heap. The next thing we're going to talk about is fast bins. Chunks with less than 60 bytes, or 80, depending on how you configure it, are placed in fast bins. Chunks in fast bins do not hold the size of the previous chunk, but rather instead link chunks together using a last in first out singly linked list method. Because of this, the chunks in a fast bin will not coalesce even if adjacent chunks are freed. This special configuration, while efficient and good for computing, can lead to unique exploit opportunities if not programmed. So to kind of show how fast bins work, we're going to malloc three, uh, three chunks that will be eligible to be placed in fast bins when freed, and then a fourth chunk to just kind of separate our top chunk away uh, that will not be placed in a fast bin, although we won't free it in this experiment. Then we're going to free our three chunks, and then we're going to reallocate uh, one of our free chunks and then place C's in it. So to begin, we're going to malloc a chunk of size 20, which works the same as malloc'ing a chunk of any other size. And then we're going to malloc the next two chunks of uh, 20 as well. And then here is our fourth chunk that is uh, malloc of size 100, uh, like we've seen in the previous example. And then at the bottom, you can see our top chunk. So we're going to go ahead and free our three chunks here. So you, the first one we free is chunk two. So you can imagine in a lap as if it's a last in first out method, chunk two is now at the bottom of our list. And then on top of that, we're gonna place chunk three, which right here points back to the start of chunk two. And then we're going to free chunk one, which points to the start of chunk three. So now chunk one is, has been the last one added to our list, and will be the first one to be taken out when we call our next malloc. 
Then we're going to uh, make a malloc of size 20, and it will use our first chunk to place the C's inside of it. And now the next one, if we were to call another malloc, would be our, would be our third chunk, which will point to what was originally our second chunk. Next, we're going to change things up a little bit and talk about the history of G glibc's malloc, or Linux's malloc. Uh, originally, malloc used the DL malloc algorithm named after its creator, Doug Lee. DL malloc was exploitable to a method commonly known as double free. It's the most basic of the uh, common heap exploits. Uh, double free exploit is when the same chunk is freed twice, thus creating two pointers to the same memory address. Then when the free spaces are reallocated, two pieces of data will be placed in the same chunk, allowing for exploit opportunities. So to kind of give you a high level example, uh, we're, we have our chunk and we're going to free it for the first time. And so now we're going to have forward and backward pointers that point to our bin that points us back to the first chunk in the list. Then we're going to free it a second time. And because we have a chunk in the list that is itself, then our forward and backwards pointers will both point to itself because it was the first chunk freed in our doubly linked uh, bin. So then we're going to malloc it. And now we still have those two pointers from the bin pointed at our chunk because the bin thinks that that chunk is still free due to the second free. However, in reality, there is memory in it because it has been reallocated. And then finally, we're going to reallocate uh, another chunk, but it's going to overwrite the first chunk. And then that is what leads to our exploit opportunities. So this became an extremely common uh, method of exploitation. And uh, uh, Linux was quick to fix it. PT malloc 2, which is short for pthreads malloc, eventually replaced it, and it uh, had implemented defenses to fix the issues that existed in DL malloc. Uh, it prevents double free attacks in three ways. There were three main ways that people attempted to expo exploit heap, the heap like this. Uh, it prevented it by confirm confirming when a free is called that the specific chunk is actually in use. It prevents invalid next sizes where the chunk, size of the chunk must be greater than a specified minimum to protect linking back. So you can't create a negative size in order to uh, link it back to the previous chunk. And then finally, it ensures the integrity of the doubly linked list by ensuring previous chunks forward pointer and the following chunks backward pointer are pointing to the correct chunk that is about to be un. So now that we've looked at the double free example, where else is the heap vulnerable? Well, we're going to take a look at three other cases. First, we're going to look at heap overflows, then use after freeze, and then other niche cases that we will explore in our final project. So to begin, here's an example of a heap overflow. We're going to malloc two chunks back to back and put capital B's in our second chunk. Then we're going to take in 200 bytes of data into our buffer that will be all capital A's and use a string copy to put it into chunk one. So to begin, uh, we have our two mallocs, and then we put our capital B's in the second chunk. And after that, we're going to take in our 200 bytes worth of A's. And as you can see, it not only overwrites the first chunk, but it also overwrites part of the second chunk. Uh, this is largely prevented implementation of PT malloc, but there are still ways to get around it even without using old compilers. Next, we're going to look at a use after free example. So to begin, we're going to copy hello world into our heap. We're going to create a small chunk and put hello world into that, uh, into that memory. Then we're going to free this chunk. So after we look at the pointer for chunk one, you can see that it's no longer hello world, but gibberish, although the last couple letters do remain. Because if you remember, it doesn't overwrite our data. The only data that gets overwritten is the data that is in the memory that the pointers use. Uh, but now we have a stale pointer. Chunk one is just sitting there still because we never deleted it. And so we're going to do another malloc um, to, and copy in Tupac is still alive into our heap. And so when we use chunk two, we return Tupac is still alive. But because we never deleted chunk one, that also returns Tupac is still alive, which again provides opportunities for exploitation. So that does it for our topical talk um, on understanding the heap and its structure. Uh, here are the references we directly used in our presentation. And here are the references that we used uh, just in learning more about the heap and uh, heap exploits that would definitely be interesting to 
anyone who is uh, looking to learn more. Um, in future projects, we are looking to build a uh, build more complex um, exploits and actually demo those uh, to to our viewers um, as opposed to uh, just kind of referencing some of them at a high level. So uh, thanks for listening. Uh, like if you uh, like this video and subscribe for more.